Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. Welcome back to the ongoing saga of Improbable versus Unity. And there's been a bit of an update, or I guess I could more technically call it a clarification. Now, very quick rundown, because this has been very out there and people probably are aware of it, but if you've got no idea what I'm talking about, last week, Improbable came out and said they're being shut down for Unity by Unity. So basically, if you develop your game using Improbable Spatial OS Networking Cloud Service, you could not have multiplayer anymore, and it was Unity's fault. And Unity came out and said, no, 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 no. We've been talking about this for a year now. You've had plenty of time. You're not in compliance with our terms and service. And, you know, you should have negotiated with us. And that's why we shut you down. And any developer out there, um, contact us. And we'll make sure that you're not screwed. So basically, they split off between partners or sorry developers and service providers and service providers suddenly need to comply with this new terms and service which they're still further clarifying as we go on now but they're really cracking down here and from the outside looking in it basically looked like unity is moving into the cloud networking space unity wanted them to pay up Improbable said no, and then here we are now. In between, Unreal Engine jumped in, did a little bit of epic trolling, as I described in another video, and that's where we are today. Now, in all of this, though, I noticed a lot of conversations or a lot of um, comments that were kind of wrong. And I also was a little bit wrong myself in that I thought that they were hosting headless servers, and I guess in a way they still are. But what happened today is Improbable came out and kind of clarified exactly how Spatial OS works. And when you read about the way that Improbable is describing it, it does make it kind of sound like, okay, how is how is Unity in the right here? Now, a lot of people actually came out and said, no, no, Improbable, Spatial OS, this serves them right because they were using Unity's proprietary technology in the cloud. And no, at least according to Improbable, that is not the case here. This is more like if Visual Studio started cracking down on people that generated executables for their fully licensed copy of Visual Studio, that they made an executable that then ran on an AWS or Amazon EC2 virtual computer instance. And they wanted you to, or the, sorry, they wanted Amazon then to pay them a license so that your executable could run on their servers. That's basically the stance that... Um, Unity have taken here, and I, I just can't fathom how that holds up. Like I, it just looks like greed to me, if, if that is where it holds down, or where it boils down to. But first off, let's go back and look at this blog post that they've posted up, where they kind of clarify exactly how Spatial OS works, what is provided and what isn't, and maybe you'll change your opinion on this entire matter. So what they're saying, is Spatial OS is a cloud platform for developing and hosting multiplayer games in the cloud. Its main features are server networking and game hosting. Spatial OS is not a game engine, nor does it contain any game logic. Developers upload whatever server-side game executables they want, and we run those exercises and executables inside containers for them. Game clients communicate with these executables through our server networking layer, and they provide networking libraries in multiple languages for developers to use their own tools and game engines. So you can actually use whatever proprietary engine you want. There's also CryEngine and Unity, uh, or sorry, Unreal Engine implementations as well. So, that is essentially the side of Spatial OS. Spatial OS is providing all of that. Basically, there are two things. One is they're a virtual machine hosting company, a lot like Amazon um, EC2 would be, or um, SoftLayer, or various, you know, that provide that technology. But they're more like Google App Engine, or the way that Microsoft Azure used to be, in that you're running an executable specifically, not a virtual machine that you configure yourself. Instead, they're running your executable inside of their container. Now, container is essentially a virtual machine. You can think of it that way. And then on top of that, they provide things like databases on the back end, so that you've got things. You can create like an MMO. So if you needed to have five versions of your server running, you can spawn up five different containers, as they call it. And then you've got this layer of code that talks to their backend database, where you'd have things like uh, world persistent state. If we say we're talking MMOs, things like what all the current players are, where they currently are, what monsters are spawned, and so on. So those are where all your world data would be. And this allows your game to scale up and scale down. And this is pretty common. This is kind of what uh, Amazon has offered all along with their ability to spin up new virtual machines, but this is more at the executable level. So where does it come down to? What do they run or what do they handle from the Unity side of things? And they've actually broken that down. So um, 
Spatial OS require workers to be game engines? No. Running game engines server side can be useful to prevent cheating or when you only want to run the same code on clients and servers for predicted purposes. This would also be known basically as a headless server. This is when you create a version of your executable that has no rendering. So it's running all of the same stuff that the client does and it does it authoritatively. So for example, the physics calculation might be done on the server and it's sent out to everybody. Uh, but the game itself is still running on each individual client. Now, the, the headless version doesn't have any rendering, which makes it run faster, but this is what allows it to synchronize and safely talk to a bunch of different clients with the same shared data. Um, so you see here, however, many games um, only need simple workers, not a full game engine to run. Now, this is another option you've got with Spatial OS. So we've got here specifically, how do, you, how do games use Unity with Spatial OS? And they're saying, the Spatial OS Game Development Kit for Unity. This is an open source toolkit we maintain um, uh, to use Unity as a game client connected to Spatial OS hosted games or with the option of a game server running in our worker service. We in no way modify the Unity game engine. Developers upload their Unity binary and we run it for them inside containers. We also provide example solutions to common multiplayer problems such as physics synchronization, uh, player movement, and shooting. So basically this is a layer of Unity compatibility and helper functions. It's like an SDK they built on top of Unity and anyone can do this. And there's no way that um, Unity can shut this kind of behavior down because it's an open source project built on Unity code. It's, this is literally, you or I could have written this with our copy of Unity. It's just Unity project code that makes working with Unity easier when you're working with Spatial OS. Uh, and then the Spatial OS SDK and C Sharp, some studios want more flexibility and choose to build their own API. Spatial OS SDK is suitable for this. So essentially what they're saying here is they're just running your EXC. They're, they're not running special versions of Unity. They're not running DLLs or technologies from Unity. All they are running is the executable you generated using your licensed version of Unity. This is really no different than I mentioned earlier on than if you uploaded it to Google App Engine, if that even still exists, or Azure dedicated hosting. If you built your executable to run in a cloud environment, that that's what they're providing basically is a virtual machine for running your exe this is kind of again like if microsoft decided that they wanted to have licensing from every server company that could run a windows binary it, it just it doesn't make sense to me where they're coming from on this how how they could go to to spatial and or um improbable and say pay up if you want to keep doing this and especially the part that makes unity look really bad is the timeline for this the year in which they said this is also in the year where they decided to start a, a partnership with google to provide cloud-based server networking so they're moving into this space and they don't want a competitor and they're squishing that pet competitor or trying to get that competitor to pay them money uh, for something that was previously free. And they're doing it through their EULA or terms of service. At least that is improbable side. And I don't know if your opinion on this shifted now that you've got a different perspective of exactly what is being provided. Now there's also the possibility, and this isn't being said by improbable, but they've got this whole thing where their worker service is running your executable. Now, for some reason that worker service is using proprietary Unity technology to make that work. Well, then Unity is in the right again. but. I, I, I think that that would have been made very clear either in this post or that post. But again, we're playing a game of he said, she said, he said, she said, and they're all being very selective about what part of the truth they want to reveal. So on that topic, we've also got a little bit more detail coming from the Unity side of things is there are, and this isn't really specific to improbable, but this whole situation has made people look at their EULA or terms of service and go, wait, what? So this is basically saying you can't run a headless server on non-authorized cloud providers. And that's kind of what literally the current terms of service are saying, that you could not run uh, on an Amazon EC2 instance unless they specifically um, authorized them to do so. So if you're using any kind of a virtualized cloud server, that cloud server has to get some kind of a license from Unity. And that's insane because at the same time, you could host your own online server and then you're completely in compliance. But if someone is providing management features or virtual scaling or you know convenience features, um, say load balancing, any of those things, then all of a sudden, nope, not in compliance, gotta negotiate a custom license. And that's a crock of, <coughs> 
Anyways, so Unity said, okay, we're going to make our terms of service clearer. Uh, we will get back to you. Then on Friday, they basically said, we are working over the weekend to clarify the language to make our intentions as clear as possible rather than rushing and adding to the confusion. Rest assured, we will never do anything that works against the better interest of our developers. I think they should probably put the word again at the end of that one. Uh, we'll have an update in the next few days. Thank you for your patience. Now, in the end, there are no winners here. It, it is a PR uh, black eye for Improbable. It is a PR black eye for uh, Unity. I guess Unreal Engine kind of won here. They got a lot of good PR out of this one for no real effort. Well, 25 million bucks. But uh, this is not a nice situation all around. But I do wonder, though, with the clarity from or the clarification from Improbable, where you find out really they're just hosting an executable in like a virtual machine environment and then providing an SDK to their own web services for things like, um, you know, network synchronization players that is completely agnostic to the game engine. That same backend works with either your own custom code or various different other game engines. There's no usage, at least as far as they're publicly acknowledging, of any of Unity's proprietary technology. I thought at first we'd be at least dealing with them hosting DLLs or using a specific version of the runtime or anything like that. But no, they're literally only running the code that you host it. Now, of course, your code contains DLLs and the runtime and so on, but that is licensed to you and how you host your damn code should be up to you. And there is where I think Unity is horrifically in the wrong on this one. What I basically, again, my take, my opinion from the evidence we've got, I think it kind of went like this. Unity said to Improbable, that's a nice pie you've got there. Give us your pie. <laughs> and that's kind of what it boiled, or give us a slice. And basically, I think Improbable went back and said, well, no, we have our own pie and no. And then it went very public when it was a private negotiation. And I think Improbable handled it very poorly with their using their own customers as leverage and so on. They made things and they handled things in a terrible way. But I think they were also put into a very bad situation here where you've got, you know, Unity just basically deciding we want to move into that space and then doing it in the worst possible way. At least that's my read on this. I'd be curious to see where you guys stand. Does this whole thing change your perspective at all? Or are you still in whatever camp you were at when this whole thing broke out? I think we can all agree this did not go well. It is not good for anyone. But hopefully we're, we're coming towards the end of this story. But I guess until we firmly decide um, if Spatial OS is or is not going to be allowed on Unity, how Unity's terms of service are going to work out, and this whole, are Unity going to start licensing to people to be able to host their executables in the cloud, which again seems insane to me. But maybe I'm reading this wrong, and maybe you have a completely different opinion on it. Either way, interested in hearing comments down below. All right, hopefully that is nearing the end of the saga, at least, and hopefully it's still interesting. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.